So this video is a little bit overdue. Um, I'm currently in my BMW 4 Series and I thought I'd talk about, I guess, the conclusion of this uh, EV testing I've been doing and what car am I going to get? Okay, so apologies if there's a bit of uh, background noise. It's currently 29 degrees here in the UK and uh, I need to have the air con a little bit because I've also got a shirt on and it's a little bit hot. But uh, yeah, so I think before I go into all the detail, I'll preface this with, obviously this is all based on my situation, circumstances and needs and desires when it comes to a car. Um, so obviously it's recommended that everyone test drives cars and uh, makes their own conclusions. But I'm looking for something that is a, a suitable family vehicle, um, has good range, so has the ability to um, you know, do that 150 mile trip one way and then be able to charge and come back as being like the, the maximum that I expect to do in any one trip. Um, I want the performance to be decent and I want it to look good too. So again, looks are like all things um, specific to the individual. Um, but I've always had sporty looking cars um, and so I'm looking for something similar to that. So sorry for uh, any of the beeping in the background, that's my snooper going off as we drive through different uh, speed zones. So. Yes, uh, the reason this video is taking a little bit longer for me to kind of come to my conclusion is because I've been trying to test drive the Volkswagen E-Golf for a while and basically I haven't been able to because Volkswagen just don't seem to have any anywhere and the ones they do have, I can come and have a look at it but I can't actually drive it and you know, I can look at it on the internet, I don't you know, need uh, you know, that. So. Right now, I think there isn't any one of the cars that I've test driven that I think right now I'm going to go for. And there's a few reasons for that. None of them, as they come right out the box, fit all of my requirements. So I really like the, the inside and the futuristicness of that Ionic. And um, that's probably kind of that and the Nissan Leaf are my kind of two top cars. The i3, I think it's overpriced and um, I don't really like the styling and it's too small as a family car. So I've written that one off. So really it's between the Nissan Leaf and the Hyundai Ionic. Now the Ionic, I really do like that a lot. Um, and if I, did decide to get one I would want to change the wheels I want to get um, the bumpers sprayed in the same color as the car perhaps get them wrapped in black like they are in the US and Europe but the other reason why not getting the Ionic right now aside from the wheel thing is I can't find anyone that's changed the wheels to get an idea of what it would really look like and what impact it has on the range but also they just brought out the Kona EV that's got that 64 kilowatt battery in so they must be planning to do that with the Ionic or bring something else out so I feel that I'd, I'd just take too much of a hit if I changed to it right now and I don't need to change to it right now because I'm still waiting for the solar install it says the battery will be whenever that comes um, so a few different things um, since doing the original uh, review of the Nissan Leaf uh, Nissan did confirm they are releasing, I think it's in October, the Nismo edition. Woohoo! But only in Japan! Woo! So, I can't get, I mean, I think I probably would have got the, the Leaf Nismo, depending on pricing, if that had been available, I probably would have placed an order for one of those. But again, the, then the other option is um, I could get a Leaf, uh, the new Leaf, because uh, I'm not that worried about the, the charging thing. Uh, but again, they're going to bring out this new 60 kilowatt one soon that will have um, the active cooling. So I probably shouldn't buy that one either. But 
if I did, um, I could probably import the, the Nismo wheels and stuff uh, from Japan and make it look a bit like the Nismo and then it would look like the kind of car I'm interested in. So that's why right now I'm not choosing uh, to get any of these. If money wasn't an issue, I think I'd get a Tesla S. I do still keep on looking at the used ones of those. You can get a 2015 one for around kind of 50K. Uh, it's got about 20 to 30,000 miles on and it comes with a four year warranty everything but it's, just, it's a lot of money on a car that is um, you know three years old already um, obviously the model 3 will be released in the UK at some point uh, I do quite like the exterior styling of that I'm still not sure about the inside I don't like the idea of having just one center screen that does everything um, which is why the Model S uh, I'm also kind of interested in but I think I just can't afford and wouldn't want to try and afford I think the, uh, the Tesla Model S but we'll see I still haven't test driven one um, and that's kind of on purpose because I'm worried if I did test drive one um, yeah, I would like it too much but that's a lot of money to spend on the everyday car um, for me based on money I have etc so uh, just to kind of draw things to some conclusion one thing that I did do was try and kind of work out some economics so which car is the best value for money now without doing the numbers I think the Hyundai, Hyundai Ionic premium SE is the best value for money in terms of it does have good range for that um, 28 kilowatt battery and it's kitted out with everything um, so uh, you know even the premium one apart from the leather it's got all the toys so really good level of trim so then what I decided to do to try and the fair probably isn't the right answer because obviously the trim levels are all different but basically what I decided to do was look at it in terms of two things the base price for the cheapest model and then the range so um, let me just get out of this uh, awkward junction and then uh, I'll take you through my numbers that might help you make your choice right so we start off with um, the leaf so 40 kilowatt and I think the base model is called the Visa V-I-S-I-A I think um, and that has a base price of 27,290 on the road. All these prices do not include road tax uh, or government discounts right now in the UK because all these things may or may not be changing. So that's basically what it is. And so based on that price of the, of the base spec, you're paying 682 pounds and 25 pence per kilowatt. So that's a 40 kilowatt Nissan Leaf equates to 682 pounds, 25 pounds per kilowatt. Then we look at the Hyundai Ionic. Base spec is the premium, and that on the road price is 29,845. Uh, and then, so obviously that's more money than the, the base spec Leaf and a smaller battery size. So that works out to be 1,065 pounds and 89 pence per kilowatt. So quite significantly more. It's nearly twice the price of pound per kilowatt when you just look at pure financials and battery size. Then we look at the i3. So that's a 33 kilowatt. Um, the cheapest uh, base spec of that one on the road is 34,000 pounds and 75, um, and that equates to. £1,032.57 per kilowatt. So, in terms of what's most value for money per kilowatt, uh, the Leaf, then the i3, which surprises the hell out of me, um, and then you have the Ionic. But like I said, the Ionic in its base spec has amazing level of trim uh, and components compared to everyone else. So, it's not a fair thing, but if we just look at it in terms of price, a uh, pound per kilowatt, and that's how it turns out. However, as I found out when driving the Ionic as an example that has the smallest battery capacity, it actually has amazing range. So 
I thought I'd also need to look at the the range uh, yeah, price per kilowatt. And now this is based on my own personal experience of similar driving activities over those three days I had each car. So this isn't the the ratings from the manufacturer. Anything. This is my own ratings. So you may get more, you may get less, um, but give you a rough idea. So. Um, once again, start off with the 40 kilowatt leaf. Price 27,290. When I drove that car, I got 145 miles out of a whole charge. So that equates to uh, one pound 88 and 20 pence per kilowatt, kind of per pound sort of thing. That the maths makes sense in my head, but just as a frame of reference. So that's pretty good. Then we looked at the Ionic. So again, that's the 28 kilowatt. It is 29,845. I got 135 miles out of a charge. So only 10 miles less than the 40 kilowatt leaf. So that means um, that it's um, two pounds 21 and seven pence per kilowatt. Lastly, is the BMW i3 again 33 kilowatts on the road price of 34,075. I got 120 miles um, out of a full charge when driving that, which works out at two pounds 83 and 96 pence. So, in terms of what is the best value for money, in terms of how much range you get, it's the Leaf, then it's the Ionic, and then it's the i3. So. I hope that helps. So, I mean, if you're just going base, you know, just on the money, um, you want to get the, the base level Nissan Leaf. Now, me, and I haven't done the, the numbers, but I know what the answers would be, um, I would want the, the Tecna spec. So, I would want all the bells and whistles um, on my Leaf, so it's that, and that wouldn't be uh, as cheap as 27 I think it's like 30 odd thousand um, and so that would probably put the, the pound per kilowatt in terms of range up above the Ionic so I still do think that the, the Hyundai Ionic is the best value electric vehicle in in that um, segment um, what I'll do actually as I uh, when I put this video um, through the edit I'll just put a little note at the bottom now as to what the Tecna compared to the premium SE Ionic would be. I think they're really the two. If you're gonna if you're gonna do it and you like your cars and you want all the all the toys, uh, they're really the, the two real options that you have. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful. I hope my man maths um, makes some sense to you. Um, I'm still disappointed that all these car manufacturers, except for Tesla again, but yeah, too expensive right now doesn't give you the option of having different wheels you know, easily when you're specking up because actually the, the Ionic, I was looking at this like the petrol and the hybrid versions actually have decent wheel options so why, why can't you just make those wheel options available to someone that's buying the pure EV now I know the answer is because they've got the, the eco wheels on to maximise your range, that's fine so just tell the customer, if you put these wheels on you will impact your range by 5% or whatever the the number is but um, yeah it's just a bit frustrating so right now at least um, there's no reason for me to change um, this car so I will be staying with my 4 series for a little bit longer um, maybe things that will change perhaps I'll have a change of heart and you know I'll, I will get the Ionic or I will get the Leaf and I definitely will get the i3 um, maybe I'll win the lottery and I'll get that Tesla S or I find a, a creative way um, of, of doing it, but not right now. Uh, one, one last question actually before I finish the video, perhaps you can leave uh, your thoughts in the comments. So I always buy cars outright, either cash, very rarely, uh, but or I would have you know, part exchanged a car and taken a loan with the bank. Never tend to have finance in the dealership. But I know more and more people do finance their cars. And I had company cars for many years, so I'm familiar with the concept of paying for something and then you know, at the end 
um, not having anything to show for it. Uh, and that, that's kind of why I get put off the, the car, you know, personal car leasing option, because I figure you're going you're gonna to pay, I don't know what the options are on these cars, let's say you pay £350 a month or £400 a month, um, and you keep the car for three years, then obviously you give the car back, and basically you're paying for depreciation, obviously, um, but then all that money that you've paid, um, obviously then you just got to start again, so it's, I just, I just don't quite. I personally can't get my head around the benefit of it because I think if you, if you get a loan, uh, and you're paying a 350, 400 pounds a month over three, four, or five years, whatever term it is you decide to go for, then at the end, obviously you've, you now own the car, um, and yeah, okay, it's appreciated a shed load, but at least the car's still worth something. So then when you go to get your next car. Um, you know, you have five, ten grand, or whatever, you know, how much the car cost to put into the next car. Whereas if you just leased it, um, the, the money's gone. And I think if you are a business owner, it makes sense because you might write the money off um, you know, through taxes, it might be more uh, financially efficient to do it that way. But I know more and more people are doing it. I've never done it because in my head, you know, perhaps because my parents never did it or anything like that, that's why it's in my head not to do it that way. But I'd be really interested to know from you guys if you do lease and why you think it makes sense. Why is it better and why are you not throwing your money away to just be continually leasing? Um, so I use myself for example. My BMW is just over three years old now. Is it three years? Yes, it is. I'm trying to look up where we are. Um, and I own this car. So I don't pay any monthly payments so I was up until about a year ago um, but now I own the car so I, all the time I'm driving this I'm not paying that £450 or whatever it might have been for the loan uh, you know, I can be saving that money um, or, or buying other nice gadgets with um, but yeah if I was leasing I'd just be continually paying that money all the time for the rest of my motoring life so and that's that's the bit that I can't quite get my head around yes of course you get a new car every three years or, or whatever it may be uh, I don't do many miles so you know this car what has it done 27 and a half thousand miles so I'm not a big user um, but yeah interesting your thoughts do you buy do you lease why why does it make sense to do one thing versus the other uh, in your opinion I'd be really interested to hear that thanks for watching this video a thumbs up would be really appreciated if you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.